Hello. After watching this video, you should be able to apply the method of Lagrange multipliers to find the extrema of a function of three variables subject to one constraint. Let's get to it. All right, so let's use the method of uh, Lagrange multipliers to find the absolute extrema of f of x, y, z equals x, y, z squared subject to this constraint, 2x squared plus y squared plus 2z squared equals 2. All right, so the first step, uh, let's let g of x, y, z equal 2x squared plus y squared plus 2z squared minus 2. All right, so then the constraint The constraint is now expressed as uh, g of x, y, z equals zero. All right, so uh, the method of Lagrange multipliers really means that we need to find some lambda which is non-zero uh, so that the gradient of f equals lambda times the gradient of g. So first let's look at all the partial derivatives here. So the partial derivative of f with respect to x is yz squared. The partial derivative of f with respect to y is xz squared. And the partial derivative of f with respect to z is 2xyz. All right, so now let's look at g. Partial derivative of g with respect to x is uh, 4x. Partial derivative of g with respect to y is 2y. And the partial derivative of g with respect to z is 4z. All right, so let's set up our equations. and our constraint. And I'll go ahead and write it in its original form. So let's start with this equation right here. <clears throat> if I divide by 2, I get that xyz equals 2 lambda z. All right, so there are two possibilities. Either z is 0 or it's not. All right, so first let's entertain the case uh, when z is 0. If z equals 0, all right, this, this equation is satisfied. And let's look at this one right here. So so yz squared is equal to 4 lambda x, but in this, right, so under the assumption that z equals 0, well, this side is equal to 0. Lambda is not equal to 0, so what this means then is that x has to be equal to 0. All right, now let's look at the uh, the second equation up here. So xz squared to lambda y. All right, so the same, uh, similar sort of situation. Since z is 0, this side's equal to 0. And lambda is not 0. So this means that y equals 0. So what we see here is that if z equals 0, then x has to be 0 and y also has to be 0. Uh, but now that's a problem because if we look at 2x squared plus y squared plus 2z squared, well, that's equal to 0 because all these things are 0. 
Uh, but that's not equal to 2. So the constraint is not satisfied. So let me write that in words here. All right, so since the constraint is not satisfied, uh, then we don't include it in our list of possible points. All right, so now let's move on to the, uh, to the next page. All right, since we've shown that z cannot be zero, well, we have that. We know that these two quantities can't be zero. Now let's, uh, let's revisit our equation here. x, y, z equals two lambda z. Right, so neither z nor lambda are zero. So what that really means is that, well, so first let's divide by z, and I'll write that in a different color. So we have x, y equals 2 lambda. Now again, since lambda is not equal to 0, that means that uh, neither x nor y can be 0. So let's write that. OK, now within, with this information, uh, let's go back to our equations. Uh, I'll start with equation two uh, from from the original system. Okay, now, but using the fact that two lambdas x y, I can rewrite this as x y squared. Now x is not zero, so I can divide by x on both sides, right, since x is not zero. And so I know that uh, z squared has to be equal to y squared. And so z has to be plus or minus y. All right, now let's look at the, uh, the other equations, the very first one, yz squared. Or lambda x. Now again, uh, so maybe here on the side in a different color. Since 2 lambda equals xy, if I multiply on both sides by 2, uh, then I know that 4 lambda equals 2xy. So this is 2x squared y. Right, again, y is not equal to 0, so I can uh, divide out by y. And I get that z squared equals 2x squared, which means that z has to be plus or minus square root of 2 times x. All right, so now let's substitute uh, all this information into the constraint. So it's 2x squared plus, now what does y have to be? Well, uh, z is plus or minus y, so y is plus or minus z, and z has to be plus or minus root 2x, so y has to be plus or minus square root of 2 times x, so quantity squared, and then z Okay, and this has to be equal to 2, because uh, we have to satisfy the constraint. Now let's uh, simplify some, so I have 2x squared. If I square this, 
uh, plus or well, if it's plus or minus, uh, it's squared, so it's just going to be a plus. Root two squared is two. Root two squared, two times two is four. So this is eight x squared. Divide both sides by eight. Two over eight is a quarter. And so x is plus or minus a half. All right, so if x is plus or minus a half, and y is plus or minus root two times x, then y is plus or minus root two over two, and z is equal to also pl uh, plus or minus root two over two because z was where is it? There it is. Plus or minus y. So these give us all of our potential extrema. Uh, so on the next sheet, I have all of these uh, the possible combinations. Uh, so if we'll note, there are two com uh, there are two possibilities here, two possibilities here, and two possibilities here. Uh, so there are in total eight possibilities. And on the next sheet, I have those possibilities uh, with the function evaluated at those places. So let's check it out. All right. So here are my x's, right? They have to be plus or minus a half. Uh, and then the y's and the z's were uh, root 2 over 2. And they were also plus or minus. And here are all the different possible combinations, right? So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 possibilities. Now, if you evaluate the function f of x, y, z, which was, if we recall, x, y, z squared, then we get these values, root 2 over 8, root 2 over 8, negative 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 root 2 over 8, root 2 over 8, root 2 over 8. And we see here that there are four places where we attain our absolute maximum and four places where we attain our absolute minimum. So let's just label all of these. So this is a maximum uh, for the constraint. And uh, we even see the point at which those occur. Uh, so I hope you found this useful. Thanks for watching.